Well, thank you everyone for uh, being here. It's really a pleasure for me to present our latest project um, where we, we were uh, looking into different uh, controllability tests uh, that uh, you can implement this in uh, parameterized quantum circuits. First, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Fernando Gago. I'm a PhD student in, at the University in Kristianikov's uh, group. And uh, I'm very interested in the controllability of quantum systems. So you probably have heard a lot of controllability during these days, but let me just do my thing and uh, explain the two different types of controllability that we're going to be looking at uh, in this uh, presentation. So first of all, you might be interested in a quantum system that is able to get any initial state to any final state. If a system is able to do that, we say that the system is pure state controllable. And that's uh, usually the case if you want to prepare your uh, quantum system in a certain state, or if you want to, uh, to be able to reach all the different Hilbert space uh, states. But perhaps you want to be able to implement every possible unitary operation on the system. So that's a strictly a stronger restriction. And uh, that means being able to perform every possible uh, logic gate on the system. Uh, we call that operator controllability on the system. And that is the requirement that one needs to be able to have a system that is capable of performing universal quantum computing. So of course, this, has, this is a very sought after uh, result. So given a system, for example, given a qubit array that has uh, some two qubit couplings and some local controls, the question is, is my system controllable? Do I have enough controls in my system or do I have enough couplings in my system to be able to implement all the dynamics that I want to implement in this system? Uh, there are some tests already out there. So for example, uh, the dynamical Lie algebra text, uh, test, uh, that's also called the Lie rank condition. But I believe it was yesterday who uh, someone here, it was uh, Christian uh, Arendt, if I'm uh, correct, he mentioned that uh, already for, two or, for three or four qubits, this Liran condition fails because it's very demanding. So we want to find alternatives to this uh, test. Uh, some, uh, a couple of years ago, we started working also in this uh, graph method to develop an alternative uh, result to expand, vastly expand the number of cases that we're able to explore using this controllability test using a graph method. Sadly, the poster session is over and the posters have been taken down, but my colleague, uh, Monica Leibscher, has a wonderful uh, poster uh, on this uh, topic. So the poster is down, but please bother her with as many questions as you can, uh, because she will be able to explain this uh, project wonderfully. But uh, the problem is that these two uh, tests are working at a classical level. And our question is, can we actually test controllability on the device itself, having a quantum algorithm, so to say? Well, we got in touch with a group that was, uh, they were experts in uh, parameterized quantum circuits, and more particularly on the expressivity of this uh, circuit. So most of you already know what a parameterized quantum circuit is. It just consists of, some gate, uh, of a circuit with some gates that depends on certain parameters that we can change. Uh, changing all of these parameters, we're able to obtain different final, res uh, final states at the end of these parameterized quantum circuits. And the manifold of reachable states, the set of all the reachable states that we can access to, depends on the position of this gate, how the circuit is, um, is uh, built. There's a, a figure of merit for uh, how good uh, one of these uh, circuits is, which is called uh, the expressivity, sorry, the expressivity of the circuit. Usual expressivity is linked to how many different states I can get at the end of the circuit. There are many uh, different types of expressivity. Here we're going to be working with what is called dimensional expressivity. And dimensional expressivity is counting the number of non-redundant parameters in my circuit. Coincidentally, that's also going to give me the dimension of the manifold of reachable states at the end, but only counting uh, the number of non-redundant parameters in my circuit, it's great. Uh, note that uh, this is very useful for variational quantum algorithms. So being, uh, having enough uh, parameters to reach my solution, but not too many so that uh, my optimization is not uh, impacted uh, badly, it's very important for them. So obviously, they had a tool to uh, measure dimensional expressivity. They call this the dimensional expressivity analysis. And no matter which uh, parameter quantum circuit you have, uh, you can run this uh, dimensional expressivity analysis. It's a, a quantum classical hybrid algorithm. You uh, perform it, you run some uh, operations on it, 
And just like that, at the end of this uh, analysis, you get the expressivity of a circuit, the dimensional expressivity, which is an integer value since we're counting the number of non-redundant parameters in our system. So in a way, this is actually uh, counting how many different states I can generate at the end of a parameterized quantum circuit. And that sounds oddly familiar with the problem that I had at the beginning, which was controllability. If I think of uh, pure state controllability, I'm interested in how many states can I generate with my dynamic, right? How many different states can I end up with, starting with a certain initial state? So these are two problems that look similar. It's just that I live here, and there's people that live here and had a very cool tool that I wanted to use. So of course, we wanted to uh, devise a test that could link the gap, bridge the gap between these two different topics. And so we did. We only had to uh, define a test such that for every qubit array, we can define a parameterized quantum circuit that is suitable such that this expressivity is going to give me information of the controllability of my original system. So let's go to the most uh, simple case, the pure state uh, controllability test, because this is a, almost a one-to-one -one, uh, test. In this case, imagine that we have a, a qubit array. So we have some qubits. We have some uh, two qubit couplings and some local controls, although everything that I'm going to say is also suitable for uh, non-local uh, controls, for more than two qubit couplings. Everything, it's just that this is the most simple example to show you. In this case, I'm going to separate the Hamiltonian into the different operators. So in my case, uh, I'm assuming time-independent uh, qubits, so all of this is going to be my time-independent drift. And for every control, I have access to a different operator. So the circuit is going to be devised as follows. For every operator that I have access to in my Hamiltonian, I'm going to do the most simple gate, which is a rotation gate. So for the first uh, operator, the drift, I'm going to perform a gate. I can, don't have access to any control with the drift, but I can let my system evolve for a little bit of time such that I generate a rotation around the drift. And for, now for every other control, I add a new rotation gate. And every each one of these rotation gates has a different parameter that I can choose. OK, so now I have one layer, and I'm going to stack this layer over and over with different parameters. This is the circuit that I need. I don't need anything more uh, special than that. And at the end, we're going to uh, choose a number of layers. It's not going to be very relevant right now, but we're going to add enough layers to reach maximum expressivity in our system. So how does the test work? Well, we start with a system with M controls. We decide on a number of layers, some parameters, and the initial state of the system. All of that really does not matter. And then we define the circuits as we have just seen. We run the dimensional expressivity analysis, and that's going to tell me the exact expressivity of my system, the dimensional expressivity of the parameters quantum circuit that I've defined. If we get uh, maximum expressivity, then we have mathematically proven that the system is pure state controllable. In the end, this means that the, the local dimension of the manifold of reachable state that I get to is, uh, has maximal dimension. That means that it has the maximal dimension, the same as the total Hilbert space that I would get access to. There's a couple of uh, mathematical arguments to be done, getting to from a local perspective to a global perspective, but uh, those are covered in the in the paper. Ask me at the end to if you're interested in those. But in the in in essence, we have proven that uh, the the system is pure state controllable. What happens if it isn't? Well, if it isn't, we have a look at the last um, layer, and we check all the parameters in that layer. We see whether they are all redundant or not. There's a different redundant uh, different parameter. If there's at least one parameter that is not redundant, something that does something different, then we add a new layer at the end of our circuit. As simple as that, we take the same circuit, we add a new layer with new parameters, and we repeat the process. We run the DEA again. We check again. If it's maximal, then we have pure state controllability. If not, then we check again the layer. If at any point we have the last layer having a uh, all of the parameters being redundant, we have a, a layer that is fully redundant, then we can also mathematically prove that the system is not pure state controllable. There will be some state to state transfers that we will not be able to implement in our system at all. Uh, and this method was uh, really great, but generally we were interested 
within the operator controllability. At, in the end, a lot of people are interested in universal quantum computing. So proving that a system is suitable for universal quantum computing is the actual goal. So how do we lift this restriction from the state level to the operator level? Most of you already have the answer. It's uh, obviously through the choi jamukovsky isomorphism. For those of you who don't know, this is an isomorphism, or this is a map, that links the operators in a Hilbert space uh, with the uh, states that are working in double that uh, Hilbert space. So this is the uh, first uh, tool that we're going to be using here. And the second one is we're going to be using the uh, operator con uh, controllability condition that is usually used for the Lie rank condition. It just tells us that the Hilbert space, uh, for a Hilbert space with a maximal dimension D, uh, the system is operator controllable if the algebra that you can generate with the different operators has the maximal dimension, the dimension of the special unitary group. So at least we have a number for the, all the different number of linearly independent operators that we have to generate. Um, we still have to create a, a parameter quantum circuit, but it's going to be the same. As you see, the structure is uh, very similar. The main change is that now we have to add the same number of auxiliary qubits to the original system that we have. And why is that? That's just to, uh, to be able to apply the choi jamankovsky isomorphism to this system. The structure of these layers are the same. We have included some um, drift for the auxiliary qubits. But this is the structure of a layer, and we simply have to stack layer of layer. Um, the other requirement is that, sadly, for Cho Jamakowski, we need to start with a maximally entangled state. It doesn't need to have to be perfectly maximally entangled, but it sort of needs to have this channel uh, structure that uh, couples the state from this uh, first system to the states uh, of the to the states of the auxiliary system in such a way. Once we have that. Then the system uh, that we have to run is uh, roughly the same. The same flowchart that I applied before is going to apply here. And let me showcase it in one of the examples. For example, here we have this uh, few qubits uh, system that uh, has ZZ couplings. And uh, here we have three different local controls. Here we have a, an X uh, control, a Y control, and what I like to call a mystery control on the system. So the question is, is this system um, uh, operator controllable? Do I have enough uh, controls, or can I implement all the dynamics that I want to implement in this system? Well, let's take, uh, for example, the first case, uh, the case um, A, where I assume that this, uh, this control is in the form of a sigma x control. In that case, we can run the algorithm, and we see that the uh, maximum expressivity reaches 63. It just so happens that 63 is 8 squared minus 1, which is the, exactly the dimension that uh, the special unitary algebra for a uh, Hilbert space of 8 uh, should have. And therefore, we can prove that our system is uh, operator controllable. We have all the different um, controls that we need in our system to be able to perform every unitary gate in it. Now, let's check what happens in uh, case B. In this case, we have uh, the same controls, except that in the third control, we have a sigma z control. Now, in this case, we repeat the same method, and we get to the conclusion that the expressivity is only 31. Now, 31 is not the same as 63, evidently, and this is enough proof to say that the system is uh, not operator controllable. There will always be some unitary gates that we are not able to access through this, uh, through this uh, system. OK. So with this, let me uh, summarize what, uh, what I've presented here today. For, uh, we have presented here a test for pure state controllability uh, systems. So no matter if, you, uh, want to, if you're using this uh, method for uh, qubits or for molecules, for atoms, as long as you can map this system to a set of um, to a set of um, algorithms, uh, sorry, to a set of uh, qubit devices where you can run this uh, dimensional expressivity analysis, then you're able to determine whether the system is pure state controllable or not. And similarly, for operator controllability, you will be able to determine whether the system is suitable for universal quantum computing to be able to implement all the different unitary gates or not. We have uh, checked this uh, here only using classical simulations, but of course the next step would be to try to implement this perhaps on uh, physical quantum devices 
to try to uh, get some insight on this, uh, on this type of uh, system. We want to explore larger systems. And finally, we would be interested in exploring the connection of this method with the quantum speed limits, because we, we think that there are some uh, subjacent uh, connections that can be impactful towards determining the quantum speed limits of a system. Let me just briefly uh, thank my team. So Tobias Harton from the Northeastern University of London and Carl Janssen from uh, DC, my colleague uh, Daniel Reich, who most of you have already met during the uh, workshop tutorial, and of course my supervisor, Christiane Koch. And let me also uh, give uh, some thanks to the Einstein Research uh, from the, uh, Einstein Research Unit on Qubit Devices who had made this uh, project possible. Uh, if you're interested in all of these, please uh, have a look at the publication. All the mathematical details are included there. Uh, there are some more examples and some uh, more how to do things, uh, pseudocode so that you can replicate the whole code. Uh, but if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me and I'll be happy to answer all of you. With this, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, hey, thank you very much for the talk and for being perfectly on time. So we have time for a few questions, if there are any, okay. So I, I have first a comment to, to doubling the space as you have done, so that appears already in some paper of ours like 10 years ago for, for controllability. The question I have, so about complexity, I'm, I'm not sure I, I did understood correctly. So you need exponential deep circuits to, to check controllability or? Sorry, can you repeat the last part? Do you need exponential what? So I, I'm not sure I understood correctly. So you need, do you need exponentially deep circuits to, to test controllability if, uh, in the number of qubits? In the number of qubits, um, in principle, uh, yes. But the idea would be to use this, uh, I mean, in the end, checking controllability using no matter which method. It scales exponentially, the complexity scales exponentially with the number of qubits, since the number of, required number of um, uh, dimensions that you have to check, no matter if it's the Hilbert space or the algebra level, is going to scale exponentially. So the complexity is always going to scale exponentially. Uh, the number of layers doesn't necessarily have to scale exponentially if you have enough controls on the system, because it also depends on the number of uh, controls per, uh, per layer. But uh, it's true that at some point this uh, method will break. But the idea would be to use this method perhaps to check controllability on smaller uh, processing units rather than on the whole uh, on a whole uh, computing device to be able to ensure uh, controllability on this uh, quantum processing unit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the nice talks and uh, for the details. It's probably best to go through the paper, but could you give a short upshot of how you ensure that this argument holds globally and not only locally? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. So we use uh, an important hypothesis in our system, in our uh, controls, and we, we assume that we have sort of uh, what we call cyclic parameters. That means that uh, your, uh, well, uh, after a certain angle, you go back to the initial point where you started. This is mathematicals are, uh, mathematicians are hating me in the room because this, is, this has measure zero. But in physics, more often than not, things are uh, related by rational numbers. So we assume that this is uh, the case because if that's the case, um, we can uh, ensure that the initial uh, set of parameters, the initial space of parameters is compact. The uh, map that we have over this uh, circuit is a um, differentiable uh, map. That means that if we start with a compact uh, domain, we end up with a compact image. That means that if we end up with a compact image that has local dimension that is maximal in the space that we're aiming to, we're getting the whole space in the end that we're aiming. And that's how we are able to go from the local uh, argument to the global argument. 